Reach more potential customers through our sports radio package by dialing 832-213-8824. It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to another Football Friday here from the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Of course, it is our daily mission to try to bring you some news that you could use. Today would be no exception to the rule. You can follow me on Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. You can follow the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. You can also keep up with information going on through the website at obnradio.com and last but not least our 24-hour dial-in message line 713-570-6736 and without any further delay we're going to jump right into today's episode what a week it has been throughout the world of FCS football. Of course, the three games that were scheduled for the SWAC this weekend have all been canceled. Prairie View taking on Jackson State, Pine Bluff taking on Texas Southern, and Alabama A&M taking on Mississippi Valley. So the next time there'll be some football action will be that in the likes of the SWAC championship game scheduled for May the 1st, Arkansas Pine Bluff taking on Alabama A&M. That game, of course, will be played at Memorial Stadium, the home of the Jackson State Tigers. Of course, we'll get into that as the game gets closer with your pick and who do you think will win and why. But another big news splash this week had to be that of Coach Dawson Odom leaving Southern University to head back to the MEAC and lead the charge for the Norfolk State Spartans. We were fortunate enough to have just for you on today, Coach Dawson Odom speaking in his own words on the leave from Southern to Norfolk and the future that lies ahead with he returning back to the MEAC. We'll first hear from Mr. Rob Butler with the Butler Report. And then from there, we'll go to the Brassens Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline and hear from none other than Coach Dawson Odom. This is Rob Butler with some SCS football news. Sam Houston completed its third undefeated regular season as a Division I program and first since 2016 on Saturday with a blowout victory over number 25 in Carnet Word. The number five Bearcats broke a scoreless tie on the first play of the second quarter with a 21-yard touchdown run by senior receiver Jaquez Izard and never looked back, leading the rest of the way in a 42-14 drubbing at Gale and Tom Benson Stadium in San Antonio. The Bearcats won't have to leave the state of Texas during the 2021 spring FCS playoffs. Sam Houston was named the number two overall seed on Sunday after finishing the regular season at 6-0 with three ranked wins by an average win margin of 27 points. This guarantees that the Bearcats won't have to travel on the road until the championship game in Frisco. Sam Houston is 13-0 all-time at Bauer Stadium in the FCS postseason with head coach Casey Keeler boasting a 27-0 career home playoff record. Sam Houston will host Big South champion Monmouth in the first round. Kickoff is set for 11 a.m. this coming Saturday. If the Bearcats advance, they'll face the winner of North Dakota State and Eastern Washington. Now, in a game that featured over 1,300 yards of total offense, number 18 Southern Illinois outlasted number 17 Southeastern Louisiana 55-48, in the regular season finale for both teams Saturday afternoon at Saluki Stadium. Southeastern finishes at 4-3, and three and they were playing their fourth road game versus a ranked opponent. They racked up 541 yards of total offense in the wild back-and-forth contest. However, the Lions could not overcome an 807-yard performance by the Salukis, who are now 5-3. and three. Southern Illinois will face Weaver State in the first round of the FCS playoffs. And that's Rob Butler, Open Mic Broadcast Network. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union has 13 different locations to better serve you. For more information, you can contact them on their toll-free number, 855-391-2149. Or you can send an email to information at bvscu.org. And welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. We have on the line with us right now none other than football coach Dawson Odom. Coach, how you doing, sir? And thank you for making yourself available for us on today. Oh, doing great. Doing great. It's always a pleasure being on. Yes, sir. Well, look, uh, congratulations on your new deal 
you're going to be heading back home somewhat. Um, originally, of course, you're from Carolina, but you're back to the MEAC, familiar stomping grounds. Um, what is it like for you to be the good son returning home? Well, the biggest thing is just the people. I think the people in Norfolk State are outstanding, the community, alumni, uh, and this is warming. Uh, I think it's a commitment there to, to build a program and build a program with some consistency and being in contention. And, and to me, that's important. I tell people all the time that uh, I'm the kind of coach that I want players to feel like they're wanted at, at Norfolk State. And I do that with a love and caring aspect. And when they when they approached me, I felt like this was something that was on the beginning. And hopefully we can build it together. Uh, President uh, Dr. Adams Gaston is unbelievable. Uh, she has a great vision. And she's about the students. And she's about the well-being of Norfolk State. And, I, and the AD of Ms. Well, with everything that's going on in in the hiring practices and in HBCUs, um, she said, you know, I'm going to try to get a proven coach, one that's done it. And I'm grateful for that because you, get, you got hired off your track record, not off your name. And to me, that's important, and that's important to other coaches that may be coming and, and seeing me and what's going on. And I want them to know people I hope a lot because there's plenty of ADs like Ms. Well. And I was just grateful for the opportunity, getting closer to family, friends, uh, getting back to the East Coast, getting into the MEAC. You know, I'm very familiar with the coaches in the MEAC. I already spoken to um, Coach Pugh uh, because I think when you go into a new conference, you reach out to the, the, at least the coach that's been there the longest and just let them know you go lean on them for any help. That's just who I am as a coach and a person, and that's just how I do business. I try to do it with the most professionalism as possible. Yes, sir. Now, it's ironic that you would mention that because we did a piece earlier this week speaking about how your proven leadership is going to really be a needed thing, especially with some of the challenges that the MEAC are facing right now. And then Buddy Pugh being the senior one, if you allow me to say it that way, uh, would be able to somewhat pass the torch to you because even though you're new back in the leadership role of the MEAC, you have a 10-year proven experience on the HBCU slash FCS level. How important was that transition and that contact point of reference made for you and Coach Pugh? Well, it was great. I, everybody look at it, and um, you don't know um, the problems that people have, organizations have, and when you look at the me from the outside, everybody says that, you know, everybody want to know why. Uh, my thing is, is that I don't have the answer to that why. Uh, I just trust and believe in the process that I have in place when it when it's making decisions. And that process is real simple. Um, that job came available in the spring. We were playing in the spring. And they wanted me. Um, I believe the good Lord put things in your place that are only meant for you. And you don't have to ask. You don't have to answer certain questions to try to figure out, you know, is this right or this wrong? He's going to make it known. And it's going to be a simple approach, but yet tough decision because, you know, sometimes it's hard walking away from success, uh, especially when you don't build the program. But again, it's in his hands. And I trust that and I believe that. And I trust the people that I'm going to work with. Uh, this is not about Dawson Odom and what Dawson Odom is capable of doing. I'm, I'm not capable of doing anything that big. Uh, I have to allow my God to lead my footsteps, and then I have to, I have to go meet the people and help the people understand in Norfolk State that this is a job that's going to require all of us, from the cafeteria, from the brass covers, from the painters, you know, every entity of the university. We have to work together and put our minds together to try to understand that, hey, we're limited in resources, but we're not limited in our creativity and our understanding. That's what we must be different, and if we can do that, I really believe we put this thing together the right way for some half of success in the future. We're, talk, we're talking right now with head football coach Dawson Odoms now of the Norfolk State Spartans on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Now, Coach, you may mention you had a successful run at Southern University. Uh, then had my fair share of lumps being a Prairie View and an alum of the body of work that you've put in with your leadership role at Southern. 
when you are doing your thing, minding your business, how did this process even start with Norfolk knocking at the door, and when did it become a reality that this was going to be the best move for you to make? It started um, probably behind doors. You know, I wasn't. I don't do anything during the season, so I don't. I don't talk to school. I really respect on my current employee. I, I just stay away. Um, and they, uh, the Trail Scott, and his former coach, decided to walk away. North, uh, North, North began to do a national search. And when they did it without a national search, I uh, guess um, they reached out. And my agent said, Look, if anybody's going to get the North State job, here's what they got to do. It's a state requirement. Everybody um, will have to apply. I said, well, look, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got time for that, man. So if you want to enter my name, enter my name. I'm, I'm okay with one back. And you just sit back and and went through the season. Got to the end of the season, it was still open. So he said, man, they, they want to talk to you. So I said, huh? I said, well, I asked permission for my AD to listen. And that's how it all started. When they gave me permission to listen, I sit down with Norfolk State, and they put a plan on the table. Uh, and I'm about, I'm about having the right plan. And that plan consisted of, you know, my my little, my youngest one is going to be going to the fifth grade. I wanted longevity so that I wouldn't have to move her, and and just a commitment to the program. Norfolk State said that, and they put that on paper. And to me, that was it was a no brainer. Uh, didn't want to leave, but in the best interest of my family and the best interest of, of my career going forward as a head football coach, I felt the people and the time was right for me to go to Norfolk State. Wow. And I know that had to be probably one of the toughest conversations that you had with your staff and your players. How did that go over, Coach, when you let them know that you're going to be moving to new territory? A lot easier with the staff because the staff and they, they they knew the battles that I was fighting. They knew how how tired I was and and yet still committed to the task. They knew how draining this pandemic was. Uh, when you're dealing with players and they got to bury parents and you miles and miles away from home, God has well opened your eyes up and saying, "Hey, what's really important in your life?" And dealing with that and, and dealing with my, some of my coaches that are from Louisiana having to deal with with the hurricane, how they have to relocate their families. And I'm seeing how everybody else is in position to help their family. And I'm so many miles away. Uh, it's kind of difficult for me to help my own family. And that just opened my eyes and just really gave me a different perspective on life. And the coaches knew that that it was difficult. You know, we've been winning at Southern University, but all people see is winning. Uh, they don't see the hard work that goes into winning. They, they don't see some of the things that that we have to deal with on a day-to-day basis that go with that winning. And that's just a part of it because that's not who I am. I'm not a negative individual. I have zero negativity in me. I'm all about positivity. I don't worry about what I don't have because I believe that um, i got smart enough people around me that we can put our minds together and just focus on the task in front of us and be successful. So I've got the noise, but I've got the distractions, and that's that's who I am, and that's what we do. The players was more difficult, though. The players were more difficult because um, I know what it's like to not have a father and grow up with that. And you've been with these guys for four and five years, and, and it's tough to tell them by. It's tough to walk out on them. But that's why you have a process in place, and you have to teach them that life happens. You teach them that things in life happen that you can't control. We don't have to agree with it. But we have to be understanding to it. Tears will shed it, emotions, and because you're gonna feel that way. Because I'm not a I'm not a football coach. I'm a football coach that loves football players, and that to me is different. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And you could see that um, on the sideline. You could see that in your conversations. 
You can hear it in your press conferences and everything. And I guess for lack of a better term, when you are an extension of these young men's lives for the rest of their lives, it's almost as if it was another abandonment moment that some of these kids may be experiencing, but you have to experience or teach them that it's not being abandoned, but it's about moving to the next chapter in life. Yeah, it's an opportunity. And my thing to them is that just just remember, uh, a lot of these young men that I was coaching, I've had a lot of disappointment in their life. And this just seemed like a, uh, another disappointment in their life. And I had to be real cordial with them in my delivery. And, you know, when I finished, one of the captains said, the coach, we wish you the best. We love you and we wish you the best. And they formed one line, and as they were exiting, you know, we meeting outside in the stadium. As they came down, I, I hugged every last one of them. And I'm going to always be here for them. And I know right now it's a difficult transition for them. Uh, they, they're trying to see who's going to be next before they make their decisions. Um, I'm still in the team group chat, and I'm letting them know I'm still here for them. And you're feeling daily stretch every day and just telling them, hey, it's going to get better. And that's my prayer is that whoever comes in helps Southern University football program get better, help these young men get the things that they deserve. That's one area I feel like I failed in, in getting them the things they deserve. He still won. He still was competitive. Those young men deserve way more. And I was a man and a bigger man for stepping down and realizing that I wasn't able to get them that more. Hopefully the next person come in, so the university do right by them, but more importantly do right by the players. He's now, never about the coach. Now, Coach, when you say you could have given them more, in what aspect do you feel like you could have given more? I don't feel like I could have gave them any more, but I feel like the university could have gave them more. Uh, they, they deserve more. Uh, what we ask those young men to do on a, on a day-to-day uh, basis, uh, they deserve more. They, they deserve food and nutrition. They deserve, you know, um, they deserve more gear. They deserve, they deserve just more from the university uh, because uh, they deserve, uh, you know, a good practice time. You know, you deserve a four hour window. You know, the where they can just come to practice, come to meetings, you know, do those things. Um, we had a tough battle with class schedules, but we fought through it. That's why I say we still won. But hopefully the next guy can come in and get some things worked out to make it even better for the players. And if they can do that, then my departure is is worth it. Because I wanted those players to have more. I wanted those players to have better. And sometimes as coaches, we don't realize we're not able to do that. I tell people all the time, if women don't get people to support your program, what else will? Wow. That's a mouthful right there, Coach. And I can feel um, the emotion that is still, of course, is fresh in your spirit and in your system and the transition which actually started on the press conference this week. When do you actually land the eagle at Norfolk, and then what do you have that you're looking into your new bag of goodies at Norfolk to work with? I think, uh, first of all, Coach Scott did an outstanding job of putting a team together. And they got players. They got players. And I take off Sunday, and I'll be in Norfolk uh, for a few days, and then, I'm back with all my stuff, and then I'm going to drive up. And from then, I'll be there until my, until my daughter graduated high school here, and then I'll be back for her graduation. But it's going to be one of those things to where this is a unique situation. Most coaches don't take jobs this time of year. Uh, you don't have spring ball. Okay, I done coached four or five years at Southern without spring ball. At the box, not worried about it. Okay, well, you got to get to know your players. Uh, we go get to know them, make the box. 
Thursday, I need here for the summer. Okay, they're not here for the first part. We'll be here for the second part. Let's get a plan in place and let's go to work. Coaching staff, you need a mixture. Then just go bring everybody in. You're going to need some of the guys there. You have to retain somebody. All right, let's figure out who they're going to be. Check the box. And my plan is just so ABC. It's, it's, it'll be well thought out. We'll take our time. Uh, but the people that go on this journey at Norfolk State are going to be impressed by the people that we bring in, by the people we are, and by the people those players become. And that, to me, is the process and how we go about doing things. Are we going to win right away? I have no idea. But we can't win right away if we don't win day one. That's our approach. One day at a time, one and oh. Every day we got to win the day. Zero negativity. If we can do those things, we got a chance. We got a chance. Very, very well thought out, sir. Now, I'm assuming you've yet to even have one ounce of conversation with any of your players that you've inherited at this stage. Yes, I've spoken to them uh, via Zoom. I met with them, and I'm looking forward to meeting with them on Tuesday uh, in person. I those guys to come by and just get this thing off to the right start. I met with them on Zoom, so I owe it to those players that I meet with them as a team, and then we form one line, and we do formal individuals one by one. You come up, I shake your hand, introduce myself, and introduce yourself. And I go get off to know, started with a team meeting. The team meeting is just so we can organize the individual meetings. I owe that to them. Uh, respect what you're given in order for respect to be received. No doubt. No doubt about it. Now, in your press conference, uh, and you've been very – uh, transparent from the day that I came across Dawson Odom uh, at Southern University, the trend that's going on right now, hiring splash names, uh, some unproven names even, and the fact that you, you were thankful for Norfolk to take a chance on you as a proven commodity. From your coaching ranks and credit pedigree, are you seeing a slight uh, sign of disrespect with the way some of the trending hires are going right now? I want to say it's disrespect because each school, you, you don't know each school's reasoning for doing what they're doing. Uh, I, I would just say that it's, it's, it's different. It's something we haven't experienced or seen, but difference don't mean bad. It, it, just, it just means frustrating. It's frustrating to the ones that that never got a chance to sit in that seat to even interview, and that's where that's where the frustration comes from. <clears throat> but you can't fault schools from doing what they think is best for their institution, and you can't fault coaches for doing what they think is best for them and their families. Uh, this is a business, and this part of the business is the part that is the most difficult to deal with. But I do believe there's some qualified guys out there that haven't had a chance um, that's been good at Division two schools or uh, Division two head coaches that are looking a chance to move up and qualified assistants that are looking, that are coordinators looking to, to step in that role. But it's hard. It's hard when you don't have, you don't know, receive those opportunities. But I do believe what's going on because I've had a chance to talk to Diaz Sanders, and I, I haven't said a lot about it. You know, I don't really talk about other coaches, but I evaluate and I observe. And what I'm learning from looking at Deion Sanders is, is that Deion Sanders has a powerful name. Everybody knows him. He has powerful connections. But he's also trying to shed light on the good with HBCU but also how to shed light on correcting what's bad with HBCUs. And people say he come off the wrong way, but a lot of this stuff is swept under the rug, and people don't realize, don't realize it. I can't bring out negativity like that because of who I am and what I mean. But Deion Sanders can. And when he brings it out, he gets fixed. But he don't only just bring it out for his institution. It's recognized at other institutions as well. He's not trying to bring down Jackson State. He's trying to take Jackson State somewhere that only he really believed that he had the power to do. And you can see it. They're doing some things. Yeah, it's a little rough in the first year, 
but this overall plan, this overall perspective of what he's doing, you have to really get to know Dion and really observe it to be able to see it. I don't really know Eddie George, he's just getting in. But I do know that that what Deion Sanders is doing is he's connecting himself and using his connections. And they're trying to do something at Jackson State that only he believes he could do. And if he can do it at one HBCU, maybe others can can look at that and say, we can do it too. Okay. Very well uh, stated and, uh, as I say, uh, duly noted as well for that. We're talking with Coach Dawson Odom, the new head football coach of Norfolk State. Coach, as a SWAC product since 1988, I personally want to say thank you for the decorum, dignity, dedication, professionalism, and just flat-out leadership role that you played while here coaching at Southern University. Um, I have always respect what you've done, what you've stood for from afar, and I truly thank you for the opportunity of you sharing uh, some of your thoughts with us and our listening audience here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I have a custom here at the Open Mic, and um, we're coming to the end of our session. I want to give you some closing thoughts and comments, sir, and the floor is now yours. Well, the best thing I believe is that uh, HBCU have a prominent place in society. We, we understand we understand what our roles are and what our purpose is. And Norfolk State, uh, our president understands that more than anybody. It is that these young men and women are under our tutelage. Uh, we have to give them more of ourselves. We, ha- we have to give them belief and hope. We have to give them understanding. But in today's society, we have to give them a force that can be heard. We've got to be more transparent in our delivery and our approach. Uh, it's different. This is not this is not my time. This is not when I was growing up. Uh, a lot of things are, are transpiring in the world today that, that you must be transparent with the individuals that you're in charge of. And it's got to be bigger than, than sports. Uh, this journey got to be more about life. And if we can get that across to the individuals that we're responsible for, then these individuals become the kind of citizens that we need them to be and be productive in our communities. Uh, they need to believe they can be doctors, lawyers, dentists, nurses, school teachers, police chiefs. They need to believe that they can make a difference in the world. And as a head football coach, that's my sole purpose. It's to pour to young men and make sure they understand that it's more important to be a man of, of, of your children, of your house. It's more important to become that man because football is not going to be a part of your life. Not for long. Even if you go on to the pros, it's still going to be short. You're going to be a man not longer than you'll be a football player. And how can we help you in that process of becoming the best version of you? That, to me, is why HBCUs are important. We have a chance to shape our community, shape our future leaders. But we also have a chance to lay our footprint on making the world a better place. That, to me, don't get no better than that. Norfolk State give me an opportunity to continue to fulfill my purpose to the young men I serve. Go Spartans. He is Coach Dawson Odoms, head football coach of the Norfolk State Spartans. Sir, thank you so much for sharing with us on today. It is truly appreciated and will never be forgotten from this end. We wish you nothing but the best in the MEAC. And who knows, man, maybe in a couple of years or so, your Spartans will be facing off against my Panthers in the Celebration Bowl. Time with there, right? Time with there. Yes, there. sir. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you so much for joining us on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our website is obnradio.com and the 24-hour dial-in message line, 713-570-6736. And until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side. The Open Mic Broadcast Network would like to take this time to recognize its sponsors and underwriters, Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Prairie View Athletic Club, 
Temple of Refuge Ministries, Reflections Paint and Body Shop, Helping Hands Lawn Service, Diva Skin Conditioner, Purple Drip Daiquiri and Grill. For more information on how you can become an underwriter or a sponsor here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, our number to call is 832-213-8824. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas.